Just give me one second, y'all, real quick. I just got to check my clock for something real quick. Well, look at here. It's prime time. What's going on, everybody? It's the granddad of Granddad Wooly, and you are here again for another edition of Wooly Reviews Hip Hop Data. We got an album review today. We're going to talk about the brand new album that just fucking dropped from two legends in the game who came together and made a fire ass duo who also made a fire ass album a few years ago. And ever since then, I've been waiting for the new shit, and we finally got the new shit, so we're going to talk about the new shit. These niggas are back. They dropped the new shit. We're going to talk about it. Talking about the new album from Prime, entitled Prime. Two. Now, for those who don't know who Prime is, Prime consists of legendary MC Royce the Five Nine and legendary producer DJ Premier, who've been doing their thing for many, many years in the game. They finally came together a few years back as an official group, and they made Prime, and they dropped their debut album, Prime, which was that fire. It was crazy. All was, uh, I just, I wasn't ready for it. I wasn't ready for it, and when I heard it, I, it blew my fucking mind. It was crazy, but I, I loved every moment of it. And I've been waiting for a new album ever since then, and now we are finally at the point where we get a new Prime album. I can't wait. Been waiting for this shit ever since it's announced. It's finally here. So now let's see if Prime 2 is dope as fuck and is that fire like Prime 1, or if maybe sometimes sequels just don't work out, like all the movie sequels and shit. I mean, sometimes they do work out, but most of the time, they I don't fucking... I'm scared, but I'm not. I... Let's talk about the shit. Now, when I first popped in this album and I tuned into the production, which is, of course is all done by DJ Premier with a little bit of a twist because what Prime does is they take the original sounds and samples from another producer and then they flip it into the Primo style. They did it on the first Prime with Adrian Young, which came out amazing. And now on this one, they're working with Ant-Man Wonder, who's done stuff with like Rick Ross and Royce himself, as well as a lot of others. Really dope producer. And I mean, I haven't heard too much of his stuff, but the stuff I have heard has been really good and decent. So, I mean, it's very interesting to see how they would pull it off. So now with that, he goes goes in with a completely different sound, a completely different vibe because Ant-Man Wonder and Adrian Young are like two different, completely different like vibes and sounds. But even with that, Primo is still able to take those sounds and styles of Ant-Man Wonder and flip it into the Primo style and he does it very, very well. Even though I have to say personally, I mean, I love Adrian Young, y'all. He's one of my favorite composers. So like I'm very biased when it comes to Adrian Young shit. So like comparing Adrian Young to what Ant-Man Wonder did, I mean, automatically y'all, the sound of this album to me was just like not exactly the same. I know it's different. I know you can't do the same shit. I know. I'm a, I know. I know. Don't fucking go down with... I'm just saying. But what I'm saying is this, is that the sound of the entire Prime project from one to two, completely different vibe. This is more of a more polished, more like album sounding album like the first prime was very gritty sort of cinematic very low key and just like lo-fi sounding but it does have that primo flair this one here sounds like it has a bigger budget bigger production just a bigger everything it sounds more cleaner more polished more smooth more just you know detailed and layered and that goes to a different sound and i gotta give it to primo for taking his style which is very very traditional and really rooted in just like that classic hip-hop and just taking it to a more polished more bigger level without losing any of that real aesthetic or that real aspect of what really hip-hop is to him and how his sound is which is really dope but i will have to say that the production on here even though it's really good it's very solid it sounds good i didn't enjoy it as much as on the first prime album and that clearly has to do with just the aesthetic sound and the sampling from ant-man wonder from adrian young that's just that's just how it is with me but i will say that primo did give some really solid and good beats there were no beats here that i said were garbage or terrible primo doesn't really make garbage beats at all but on here i think that just you know the sound that he gives the beats are really cool they're dope nothing really like knocked me out of my seat a couple beats here and there but nothing that made me go oh my god this shit is fucking amazing but there were beats that were like yo head nodding got me in the zone got me feeling the vibe and it worked out well for royce on top of that primo comes through with those legendary primo cuts that we love to hear on all the production that he does and it's all over this album i mean he's got cuts from like tribe and he uses uh, ll cool j and even some shit from the first prime album as well as a lot of other shit which is really really dope and i just love how he just you know throws the cuts in there and really how it works out and i mean you can't have a primo track without primo cuts it's hand in hand like if you have a primo track and he ain't cutting on that motherfucker then you ain't got a primo track he just gave you some shit that he didn't probably want in the first place and you just got to deal with that shit but if you got the cuts on there then it's official and when it comes to royce who's the mc of the group who i've said on record that he is literally one of the only mcs who i've never heard a bad verse from every time royce raps he's spitting that fire he's never had a weak verse and it's i mean it's the fucking same on this album Royce comes through and he fucking kills it. He's got so many different types of wordplay and subject matter and just the way that he delivers his verses is really dope. And even on some of the songs that I really don't care too much for, 
he still comes through with a really, really good verse. I mean, he talks from everything from just, you know, his life personally, you know, to just about the state of hip hop, pretty much what you usually get from Royce the Five Nine, but he also comes through with some really cool conceptual songs here and there, like on the song Loved Ones or the song Flirt, where he talks about how girls don't know how to flirt, so they just, you know, do whatever they gotta do to get a dude's attention, but he wishes that they would just do it the same way we do it, because we gotta put in all the work sometimes, and sometimes we tire of that shit, we want you to come and holler at us, it'd be nice once in a while, I'm just saying, learn to flirt, girls, come on, come on. It's time, it's 2018, let's get it together. As well as this rush, just really trying different things with his voice and his style and his flow. I mean, it's just really something that where Prime is really just taking things to a new level rather than keeping it stuck to this traditional, you know, bars and boom bap style that the first one was that I love. But I do appreciate Prime really just trying to like make things a little bit more bigger and a little bit more just expansive, not only with the production, even though I don't like, I'm not in love with the production, I do appreciate what they're doing. The same thing with Royce. I love his verses, I love his flows, but he'll do things where he tries to sing a little bit, a little harmonizing. He comes through with some very interesting hooks that sometimes are just okay, but I appreciate them trying new things and not being boxed in because it's so easy to do that, especially when you do that type of hip hop where you want to stick to that underground sound to cater to the real fans. But sometimes if you want to make things go to another level, you got to try new shit. Even though everybody might not like it, I can appreciate someone trying new things if they're staying true to themselves and just really not fucking up completely with the shit and giving us something redeeming out of the attempt that they're trying to do new shit. But I will have to say that some of the songs on here did give me a bit of a sour taste, not because they're bad songs or whack, nothing like that, but it's because Royce's verses on there are the same verses that he said in the Funkmaster Flex freestyle that he did a while back, or just recently actually, and it's like, okay, I know you use verses from Prime, but now when I hear it on the song, it's like, I've heard this before, so it, it lowers the impact. It's still dope, it's still crazy, but it's just like, I heard it before, so it was like, I was like, uh, okay, yeah, he said that on Funk Flex. And he, actually, a couple songs, like Streets, uh, I think Streets at Night, he used verses from there, uh, Without Warning, he used verses from there. I think those are the only two, I'm not sure, that, I, those are the ones that I definitely picked up and remembered, because he said, like, clearly parts, right? I was like, yo, that's exactly from the Funk Flex shit, which is okay. I know when you go on radio and you freestyle, you want to say shit that you got in the pocket, because it's dope, but just hearing it so recently and then hearing it on the record, it just, it just lowers that excitement of hearing the verse, because you're like, oh, okay, this is where he got it from. It's still dope, but it's not that fresh, like, oh my God, he's crazy, he's snapping it. It's not that first time listen on an album because we've heard it before already. So that's one thing that kind of soured me on some of the songs, but they're still dope and they still come through. It's just, you know, you wish you would have heard it the first time on the album rather than somewhere else. But regardless of that, Roy still has one of the best pins in the game and he is still killing it up and down, left and right on this album. But it ain't just him. He's got some features on here and they came through and did their thing too. So all I got it right here is 17 tracks. A lot more than the first prime, which is like nine. I said it was too short. Ain't too short this time. Y'all got it. Y'all don't double up on a nigga. Okay, I appreciate that. So he's got, hold up. He's got Dave East on here, Rock Marciano, Yellow Wolf, uh, Novel, Rap City. You know you gotta have Rap City. Uh, Big Crit, uh, Denon Porter. Uh, who else? Uh, Two Chains, uh, Chavis, uh, I think it's, is it Chavis? Yeah, Chavis Chandler, I think that's what it is. Uh, Brady Wyatt and CeeLo. And that's a pretty decent feature list, y'all. It's pretty dope. It's very, very well rounded. And you know, there's some features on there that most people probably didn't think would be on there. We got like Two Chains, but then you got Rock Marciano. So it's like a very crazy spectrum with that, rather than on the first prime where you get like, you know, really traditional hip hop sounding cast that kind of fit on here. On this album, it's more of a versatile and more of a variety with the features, which I can appreciate. And for the most part, they all come through and do their thing. Some guest features on here were just mad to okay to me, like CeeLo's hook on the last song, Gotta Love It, I thought could have been a little bit better. Same thing with Dave East when he did his verse on Era, which is a song that I thought was okay as well. I think his verse on there was just like, it was cool, but it just didn't feel like it fit really well with the actual beat. Felt like Dave East was having a little bit of a problem gelling with the beat in a way. But then you have really dope verses like, Two Chains, again, comes through with a really cool verse on Flirt. Rock Marciano came through with a really dope verse, as well as Rhapsody, of course, who always kills it. So it was like a bit of a toss up with who came through really, really dope and who didn't. But overall, I didn't hate any of the features on here, just some left more to be desired than others. But overall, it was a good feature list, did their thing, can appreciate it. Now, you know I gotta give you my top five tracks, y'all, and this was a bit difficult because I had to listen to this album a few times to really lock down the top five because there were some songs here that I went back and forth on, some that grew on me, but I did get five down, and here we go, let's see. So we got Black History, that one was dope, uh, and then we also got, let me see, I might be able, uh, Rocket was cool, I like that one, Loved Ones, of course, uh, what else is good? Uh, Do Your Thing, I like that one on there, that was really good, and then it's a toss up between number five with Flirt with two chains and respect my gun with Rock Marciano. That's like 
they're tied. So you know what? I'm gonna give you a top six. Why not? With a six man, top five with a six man. We'll do that. So we'll go back up to the top. We'll do it in order. So Black History is actually the first track on here, and it's really dope because I love what Royce is talking about. He's pretty much talking about just Black History as far as hip hop's concerned. He talks about how you know Premier and Guru, who are Gangstar, R.I.P. Guru, how they pretty much met and got together and became you know the legendary group that they were and still are. Royce also talks about himself pretty much how he was a baby born premature, and you know it was like a few months that he had to be in an incubator, but he ended up growing up to be this dope MC, and he was kind of a troublemaker as a kid, and the only one who could kind of get through to him was Jay-Z because he was so influenced by Jay-Z and hip-hop. So it's really dope because you get sort of the backstory of not only Royce and Prime, but just hip-hop in general from legendary iconic figures that kind of helped shape the culture and just made it to what it is today. A dope way to give a very respectful nod to hip-hop and just a really, really dope song in general. So I liked it. The beat on there was really dope. I liked the little beat switch up in there and it came out good. So dope opener, dope track. I liked it. The next song, Respect My Gun, is a song that kind of warmed up to me. At first when I heard it, I was okay with it, but I ended up liking it a lot more and more as I heard it. It really, really works well with Rock Marciano because of the beat. The beat is very low-key, sort of sinister, gangster-like, really, really laid back, but it just sounds so goddamn good. Royce comes through, and it's really one of them just like, you know, dope bad songs where they talking tough, gangster talk, but I love the hook on there. It's like, you ain't gotta respect me, but you better not Disrespect my motherfucking gun. That shit's fucking dope. I don't know why it's just like, I just love how we just kind of flipped that at that last part of the hook. Really, really dope. Rock Marciano came through with a really, really dope verse. I mean, like, I mean, it just sounds good. It's the perfect song. I really like their chemistry together. Very dope. Check it out. The next song is Rocket, which I think was the second single on this album, and I love the beat on here. It's got a really, really dope piano and string sample going on, which is really dope. Hard-hitting beats. Primo comes in with a really, really dope set of cuts on this crazy breakdown, which I love. They even give a dope nod to Tribe Called Quest with the Can I Kick It, but he says, Can I Rock It? Yes, you can. It's really just dope, and it's just a really, really good single, really good song. Very very, very high energy. Love the track. You probably already heard it because it's the second single, like I said, but if you ain't, check it out. Very dope. The next song is Loved Ones. This features Rap City, and I love the beat on here. It's like some old school, like murder mystery 1920s vibe to it, which is really dope. Primo flipped that sample so damn well. And it's a conceptual song where Royce is playing this character who's this dude in the streets, and he's got no love for nobody but his niggas and the streets, not even this girl. He actually's cheating on this girl with his mistress, and she finds out. Rap City plays the role of the wife who's like, yo, I was down for you, I was there for you, and you fucked me over. Fuck you, I'm leaving. I got my own account, I got my own shit. You don't love nobody, you don't love me, you just love yourself in these fucking streets. And he's pretty much saying, like, you know, hey, that's how it is. That's the code of the streets, that's how it is. You gotta love no one but yourself and your peoples because those are the only ones you can trust. It's a dope song, dope concept. Love Rhapsody's verse on here. She came through and killed it as always. Royce came through on two verses and killed it. Everything came together well and that beat is just so goddamn hard hitting and dope. I love the way that Primo flipped it. And I mean, it's shit. I mean, you can't love nobody in these streets. It's, it's cold. It's cold and no love for nobody. The next song, Flirt, is really dope. I love the beat on here because it's very hard hitting, but it's got this very light, just like chimey feel to it. I don't know what the fuck. The, it's a sound. It's like, din, 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 din. it's like a, it's like a string. I don't know, but it's fucking dope. It sounds. I'm not a producer, y'all. Fucking rap. Fuck it. But the point is this. Beat is dope, I like the vibe of it, and I like Royce's humor on here where he's pretty much talking about like, yo, he just finds it funny that all these girls that he like talks to, like tries to flirt with them, but they just can't do this shit because they think because they look good, they don't have to do anything. So they'll just do this random shit, like they'll drop a pencil and bend down in front of them so we can see they button shit. But like, I mean, he just says, yo, why don't you just fucking talk to me like a normal person and flirt around like we flirt around with you because it would be like better than just what you do. But he's like, he doesn't give a fuck at the end of the day because he's gonna still smash. Brings in a little humor to the album and it's very, very true because like, yo, there's Times when girls try to flirt with me and they just don't know what the fuck they doing. They try though and I, it's cute. You're like, oh, you trying, you trying. And the last song is Do Your Thing. I really like the vibe of this beat. It's very laid back and chill with some really, really nice subtle horns on there, which comes off very, very well. Royce, at the same time, is very subtle with his delivery and his flow. Really good hook on here where he's kind of singing. And he's pretty much saying like, yo, I just want you to go and do your thing. Like, you don't want to be on my bad side. I'm going to give out these good vibes. And you take those good vibes. And he's pretty much just talking about how, you know, his life is just good right now for the most part. He's just, you know, just doing his thing and just being him. And like, if you want to be like him, then do your thing and get these good vibes. If not, then you don't want to be on his bad side because shit, Royce don't, he looks like he gets really mad sometimes when you're on his bad side. You don't want to do that. So you just go and do your thing and be good about it and you'll be good. But it's a really dope song. I love how it came out and Royce is just really, really just doing his thing. No pun intended, but pun intended. And that's my top five plus a six man, y'all. But overall, I will have to say that Prime did give me some good songs on here, some good vibes. I do appreciate them trying new things, even though I really don't love everything on here. There are some songs on here that I do think are really dope and some that I think are just okay. But I can 
appreciate it for what it is. And I will say I will be listening to a few songs on here from time to time. So my final verdict, I'm not saying that Prime 2 is a very solid follow-up to a debut album that I thought was fantastic, but this one just doesn't live up to that same level to me personally, but it is very good. All I'm saying is that the beats on here, which are sourced by Ant-Man Wonder, do come off very well for the Primo style. I wasn't blown away by any of the beats, but I didn't hate any of them, and they work well for Royce. As far as Royce is concerned, there isn't a whack verse at all on here from him, but at the same time, we did hear some of these verses prior on Funk Flex's freestyle, so, I mean, they did sour it for me, but Royce did do his thing. Features came through, some were hits, some were misses, but overall, I did enjoy what they did. I mean, with the ones who did come through and some who didn't come through that much, it wasn't god awful, but it was solid. So for the most part, I mean, like, I mean, it's, it's a really good album. It's not as fire as I hoped it was going to be personally, but I do enjoy this album and I will go back and listen to quite a few of these tracks and records on here, but I do think Prime 1 is still better in my personal opinion. So all I got to say is that for me, Prime 2 is not Granddad approved, but I will give it a very highly Granddad recommended. So go check it out. It's out right now. And even though I don't think this 100% lives up to the same level as the first Prime to me personally, I do think that this is an album that you should definitely check out if you are a fan of Royce and Premiere because they did put together still a very, very good body of work with this album. But I got nothing more to say. Prime, Prime 2 is very highly Granddad recommended. So go listen to the shit right now. Flip it. All right, y'all, that's going to do it for today's video. Make sure you give me a thumbs up or drop a comment. Tell me what you think of Prime, Prime 2, if you've heard it. If you have not heard it, like I said, I think you should definitely check it out if you're a fan of these two dudes. They're legends in the game. Even though I don't think this is as good as the first one, it's still a very solid album. Some very good moments on here. And I still will be listening to a few of the tracks on here easily. And I'm looking forward to Prime 3. I want to see who they work with now. After Adrian Young and Ant-Man Wonder, I wonder who's the next producer that they're going to tag to come in, you know, do the sounds and the flipping and the sampling with. I'm very interested. I like that concept. So I hope they keep going with that because it's really dope. Previous videos on the size was my latest single. Check that out. Show us some love. And as always, Twitter, Facebook, SoundCloud, Instagram. Links in the description below. And subscribe. Button on the screen. Button below. Wheeler Reviews twice a week as well as the fucking top 30 shit. We're all like, we're like over halfway of that shit. So check out the granddad's top 30. Check out, you know, let's talk about the shit. Hit up the Patreon. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you can know when I drop new shit. Gaming with the granddad. All that good shit. Info below. And I got nothing more to say. So until next time, I'll take my leave. Granddaughter. Prime, Prime 2, it's a solid album, y'all. Don't hate it, don't love it, but it's good. I mean, you can't get mad at that, but you can if you want. Don't, though, because like, I'm fans of y'all. I mean, I wouldn't appreciate y'all be mad at me. I'm just being honest. I'm just saying. Y'all, can I still get on Prime 3? No? I'm out of here.